Hello and welcome back to tuning in to today's uh, fourth video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fourth video. Day 10 will take us to the 5th of September. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended Jeff S at Isham Ensembles. Maybe we'll try in a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS meeting at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that will get us, of course, well into the second half of uh, September. So I shall get on that for you in a moment just to say that first video we really saved was our six seven UK weather forecast with recent weekend forecast and also the third and final autumn 2023 seasonal model roundup that gets 15 one five long range models together from the world's leading forecast center to see what they're all showing for the uh, autumn of 2023 for the third and final time this season it's all ahead of the autumn forecast being released tomorrow tomorrow could be an epic epic day with the autumn forecast landing more about that at the end of the video please like share subscribe on all today's videos and content we put around 20 subscribers that's all two zero to get ourselves to um 16.7k so if you could give us a sub to your friends or family to subscribe it will be incredible. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, we've got three interest areas in the Tropic Atlantic. That's where we're going to begin today. With the Disturbance 2, which is the uh, yellow... <laughs> excuse me, the yellow X, uh, just here, giving a 20 to 40% chance of cyclone formation. That's one to watch, particularly in the uh, seven-day time frame. We've got a red X, which is definitely one to watch. This is Disturbance 1 has a 70% chance of cyclone formation in the uh, next two days and a 90% chance in the next seven days. It looks like that is very likely to become GERT. They're saying Northwestern, uh, Northwestern Caribbean Sea and Eastern Gulf of Mexico. Shower and thunderstorm activity continues to show signs of organisation in association with an area of low pressure located near the Yucatan Channel. Environmental conditions appear conducive for further development of this system and a tropical depression is likely to form within the next day or two as it moves generally northward over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Interest in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, northwestern Cuba and Florida should be uh, should monitor the progress of this system. That could be on its way up to Florida next week. One to watch. We've got Tropical Storm Franklin here giving maximum sustained winds of at 65 miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of 992 millibars tricking on franklin we see this is now uh, predicted to become temporarily a major hurricane so starting as a tropical storm becoming a hurricane within the next few hours really imminently uh moving northwards to the west of bermuda where it does make it to a major hurricane status i've been expecting that because the uh predicted maximum staying wind of 110 miles per hour um around sort of Monday, Tuesday next week, that is only one mile an hour off like major status. So I've been expecting this would probably uh, end up uh, making major hurricane status if it does indeed get get to 110 maximum sustained miles per hour. Uh, loses its um, major hurricane status later on next week as it pushes northwards. But still is a hurricane uh, quite a long way north off the uh, northeastern coast of America there. If we go to discussion, let's see how strong this is now predicted um, to get. So, yes, predicted to get to maximum sustained of 115 mile per hour. That makes it a low-end category 3 hurricane, I believe. So, um, interesting that uh, Franklin could well be our, um, our first major hurricane of the season. Not for very long, very quickly it starts to uh, weaken by the look of it. But um but yeah, that uh, that definitely gonna be a very, very, very significant storm. And uh, reaching hurricane status, um, which is maximum stage of seventy five bar per hour within the next twenty four hours. We shall keep you updated as this hurricane season progresses. Uh seasonal temperature has ticked down slightly. We're now sitting at 16.9, which is 1.2 degrees above 6.990 average, that's visual to yesterday, the 25th of August. That will slowly edge down, I think, over the next, uh, the rest of the month, over the next few days. So I would imagine this will finish somewhere around 16.5 in the end, somewhere in the mid 16s. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Bradford today, the red line. 
It's a 30 year upper air temperature average for Bradford. So we're starting off close to or a little bit below average with those upper air temperatures over the next few days. Into early September, upper air temperatures return closer to or slightly above average, but no sign of anything particularly hot coming up. No sign of anything particularly cold coming up either, I have to say, just hovering quite close to long term averages. Does look a little bit unsettled as well. We've got showering conditions to come today. Um, a bit drier for a couple of days early next week. Remember, showery weather comes back later next week. So the first week of September could bring some rain. I think that's particularly so actually for more southern parts of the country somewhat unusually. That might carry on into the second week of September. You'll notice these uh, green spikes here. That's the GFS Midnight Operational Run. Uh, it does look as though the uh, Midnight Operational Run was a bit of a wet outlier compared to uh, many of the ensembles. But nevertheless, it does look a little bit mixed, I have to say, that as we go through the first week or so of September. Temperature normally is on the 26th of August, but of September around to a little bit below average. The nights will be cooling down in particular, I think, over the coming nights. And precipitation anomalies so from the 26th of August, but of September drier than average in the north and uh, near a normal further south. That might turn into a north south split with northern air becoming uh, drier for, or saying drier than average or wetter. Uh, southern air becoming wetter than average um, as we go through the opening week or so of September. We'll keep an eye on that in the next few days. Basically, we're back from Earth. No school dot net shows we're under a trough of low pressure today. Below pressure is sitting actually just off the east coast. Um, and we are bringing some cooler air from the north as well. So you probably noticed that the air has freshened up quite a lot, particularly so where it's been relatively warm down in the, <laughs> excuse me, again, I've got a little bit of tickle today, it's very annoying, um, so in the south and southeast, it has been uh, relatively warm, but you probably noticed that it has cooled down over the last day or two, right, let's start going through chart data, baby, so as you can make your run, it's looking midnight on Tuesday, we've got a showery chop of low into the north, that brings uh, sunshine shower to northern areas, shower becoming a little bit more widespread into Wednesday, and then towards the end of next week, the next area of low pressure is starting to push from off the Atlantic that could be bringing out to breaks of rain, especially to more southern areas with it. Icon, again, looking rather showery through the middle part of next week. In comes low pressure in the second half of next week. That could bring some wet weather, which will be relatively mild down, or relatively warm down in the uh, south boat, despite uh, the showery conditions. The GFS midnight run looks like that. Again, some showers up in the north through the middle part of next week and in the east. And in comes the next load. The second half of next week, that brings some outbreaks of rain with it. After that, setting up high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south type snow. So that brings the wettest weather into the southern half of the country. Northern areas should be mostly dry. More low pressure moving in as we head toward day 10. Keeping it quite unsettled, really. And again, always the focus of rain for more southern and western regions, whereas the north and the east tending to be drier, close to that area of high pressure. Quite an unusual pack from Jeff's Midnight Run, which is the reason it was a little bit of a wet outlier, and that would be particularly so for more southern counties. It really goes on right to the very end, but by the very end of GFS Midnight Run, we've got low pressure right over top of the country. That gets us to uh, Monday the 11th of September. The GFS 6 z again, looks a little bit on the showing side up in the north through Tuesday to Wednesday. Then the next low coming in Thursday, Friday, about bringing some outbreaks of rain. Oh, with it on into the weekend, high pressure establishes uh, to the north of the country, bring a reasonable amount of dry weather there, but low pressure down to the south could keep the showery conditions going. And as head up towards day 10, the pressure weakens again and showers become more widespread. Into the extended range, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, affecting northern areas, the south mostly dry and reasonably warm temperatures. If you enjoyed the video, please give you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to have friends about Gals Web. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for us. GM, once more, with showering conditions up in the north through the middle part of next week. Then low pressure off the Atlantic later next week, bringing some outbreaks of rain uh, with it. Further areas of low pressure uh, around days 8, 9, 10. So all looking rather showery and mixed from uh, the GEM there. And the ECM looks like that. So showering conditions in the north and the east.
through um, through Tuesday and Wednesday, then low pressures in off the Atlantic through Thursday and Friday, bringing out breaks of rain with it into the uh, weekend. That's a little bit stronger with that area of high pressure over the weekend, so that will bring mostly dry a relatively warm weather to much of the coach actually through the first weekend of September. It's not long though for the high pressure pulling back out to the west. You get wind back to the northwest and we turn things showery again um, around days 9 and 10. But we do get the first weekend of September there um, with the ECM actually looks mostly dry even down in the south. It would be quite a bit dry and warm weather with that. So how strong that ridge is and, and, and its exact placement will be critical for next weekend. But we might get a nice weekend next weekend. It's possible. Certainly in the north, I think that looks very likely. But further south, there is a question mark. Uh, right, again, this is the today's forecast based on the ECM run from tobedshow.com. Showering, of course, at the moment. Then we go a little bit drier until the last stages of next week where more rain starts coming in from off the Atlantic then. Heading up towards next weekend, the high pressure builds more strongly, so it turns uh, drier across most parts of the country. But uh, by day 10, just an indication that showers are returning, especially so to the north and to the east. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. The Icelandic Met Office gets us the 5th of September. 28 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operational run, with high pressure in the ascendancy, so mostly dry there at day 10. Could be a little bit um, weaker with the pressure down in the south, though. That might bring some shower conditions into the south and the east. And then 23, with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. That's much more unsettled and uh, westerly and whatnot. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 10th of September. 16 members of the East Shem ensembles with a trough over to the east of the country. A ridge is out to the west. A little bit on the uh, cool and slightly showery side there. 12 with high pressure to the east and south. Low pressure to the north and west. Winds coming in from a westerly uh, direction. Should be mostly dry, especially in the south with that. And up 12 with high pressure right over the top of the country. And 11 with high pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia and bring the wind in from an easy direction. One of those options look relatively the anti-cyclonic at day 10 and day 14, 15. So um, maybe high pressure influences through the first half of September are possible. Uh, CFSB2, it's all a little bit confused though, isn't it? It's all a little, it's trying to get a handle really on this. And that's often the case with September, as I always explain, it's a very difficult month at the best of times um, due to the Atlantic, you know, developments with tropical storms and that. So it's a job to get a handle, isn't it, on, on this video? Exactly where things are going through the first sort of 10 days of uh, September. I think um, it looks like, you know, it looks like it's changeable, but there's quite a bit of high pressure going on. So so I think it's just a case of watch this space, really. We still don't know for definite uh, what the first week, 10 days of September, is going to yield. CFSB2 finally leaves the 500 millibar height anomalies breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 26th of August, 1st of September. Looks unsettled there with a trough of low pressure over to the East Coast. The ridge is out to the West. Week 2 is going to be the 2nd to the 8th of September. And this sort's very nondescript. This is job get and glob as well. Got some low pressure up towards Greenland, some high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, high pressure down towards uh, the Med, uh, and some blocking towards Svalbard. But what, what's going on in this large white area? Um, again, looks very inconclusive, doesn't it? Uh, week 3 is the 9th to the 15th of September. A ridge in the Atlantic extending through the west of Europe and to the eastern part of Europe. So that should be mostly dry, quite warm in theory. And then week four is the 16th to 22nd of September with high pressure just out to our west. That brings dryish weather across the country, but with winds in from the northwest could be a little bit on the cool side. So I have to say it all looks very nondescript though. And uh, as I say, rather difficult to decipher exactly what's going on here for uh, for the first half of September. We shall see how it all plays out. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about it as well. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. We need to put on around 20 subscribers. That is all to get ourselves to 16.7k. Thank you so much everybody for something so Bar and keep it coming. Thank you so much. Right, so just to what's happening tomorrow and on Bank Holiday Money. So tomorrow we're going to have a 6 m UK weather forecast. We've got the big one dropping. We've got the Gals Web is Autumn 2023 forecast. That will be released at 10 a.m. 
tomorrow. Um, as well as that, we've got the final sunny round of the year. I'll be live streaming our 10 to 14 day with loads of long range at 6 p.m. So epic day tomorrow. And then on Bank Holiday Monday, after all these videos updates that I'll be recording, I'm going to collapse at heat on Bank Holiday Monday just sleep. Um, so on Bank Holiday Monday, after 6 p.m. UK weather forecast, we will have our historic weather video. And that is going to be looking at the winter of 1880, 1881. It's going to be absolutely epic. It's already recorded. I tell you, it's a goodie. It's one that you've all been waiting a long time for, or many of you have been waiting a long time for it, with a freezing cold sub-zero and very snowy uh, uh, um, January, sub-zero CT and very snowy January. So that's to come on Bank Holiday Monday. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday, though. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.